The terms bug and debugging are popularly attributed to Admiral Grace Hopper in the 1940s. While she was working on the Mark II computer at Harvard University, her associates discovered a moth stuck in the relay and thereby impeding operation, whereupon she remarked that they were debugging. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be debugging an actual bug I discovered in the Orchard Core Media Library. We'll be debugging both C Sharp and JavaScript. Please stay tuned with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. In order to become a developer, you need to write code. But to become a rock star developer, you need to know best practices and know how to use the software tools well. One of the most important tools in development are debuggers. Visual Studio by far is the best debugging tool in the business. Debugging has been near and dear to my heart. As a software engineer, you spend most of your time debugging other people's code. You really start to appreciate code that is well-designed, thought out, out elegant and well-documented. So how do you debug code, especially code that you don't know anything about? Well, you unleash the power of the debugging tools. The other day, one of my viewers reached out to me. He was struggling with the Orchard Core Media Library. He had found a bug. For those who don't know, the Media Library is a software component in Orchard Core that manages the media files like graphic image, audio, and video files. I remembered I stumbled upon an issue a while back, but I found a workaround to the issue. As they say, with bigger fish to fry, I forgot to create an issue on the Orchard Core GitHub repository. Well, I decided it was time to duplicate the issue, document it through a video, and create an issue. The following is a short video I created that demonstrates the bug. Loading the Orchard Core solution into Visual Studio, doing a rebuild. Okay, run the application. Okay, let's select the blog theme. Hit the finish startup button. Admin dashboard. Let's go into the blog. Let's click on a blog post. Okay, let's scroll down and let's go ahead and select this image. And let's hit the delete. Now let's hit the plus to add an image. And you notice here that even though the recipe has loaded images or the root directory, nothing is showing here. So there's a bug in the initialization of this library. So if I upload a file, select OK, select that, and hit OK, then file it shows up. Let's say if I go ahead and delete it, select the file, then delete it, and then go back here. It only shows one file. There should be more files in here because the other images were was loaded through the recipe. So there's an initialization issue here. But what's interesting is if I say cancel here, publish here now, now go back in here, and now try to add an image, there's nothing here. If I click in here, there's, there's no images now. Issue here as well. What's interesting, there's a workaround. If I hit the plus key, and add a folder, say Orchard, hit OK. So now you can see all the images. I then created an issue on the Orchard Core GitHub repository. I took my video and created an animated GIF so that I could attach it to the issue. One of the core developers got back with me right away. He said that they had seen this exact same issue during a demo, but could never reduplicate it. He asked me if I could take screenshots in Chrome DevTools and referenced a few JavaScript functions. I have nothing against Chrome DevTools, but there is a much better tool that's more suited. That tool is Visual Studio. Not only it can debug JavaScript, but it can also debug C Sharp and JavaScript in the same session and work in conjunction with Chrome DevTools. Now how powerful is that? Well, let me show you. The first thing we need to do is to clone the Orchard Core repository. So let's head on over to github.com slash Orchard CMS slash Orchard Core and hit the green code button and open with GitHub desktop. Open GitHub. And let's go ahead and clone that. Okay, great. So now let's fire up Visual Studio and load the Orchard Core solution. Okay, you notice that they have a source directory here. And in the source directory, 
there's a project called orchardcore.cms.web. And so what you want to do is right click on that and set that as your startup project. Do rebuild solution. This will take some time. Okay, great. Everything all built successfully. So let's go ahead and run our application. And as you can see, it actually launches Chrome, but it puts it in a special mode that it doesn't have all the plugins. So that's kind of a nice feature with Visual Studio. Okay, so one of the first things you want to do is you want to make sure your whole browser is, is clean. So what I do is I'll go into the history here, and then they have an option to clear browser data. And I go to the advanced part, and I clear everything. So you don't want any of that affecting your application when you're testing here. Okay, once that's done, we can just go ahead and refresh, and let's enter our site name. And let's go ahead and select the blog recipe, and we'll use SQLite as our database. And let's go ahead and enter our credentials. And then go ahead and hit the Finish Setup button. And we can go ahead and save our password if we want. So now if I bring Visual Studio up, you can see that it's running here. And what I want to point out is that there's exception settings here. So if you want, you can actually enable your exception settings. And this is a great tool of figuring out what's happening in your application. And most of the time, these exceptions are turned off because if you enable these, you'll get every exception in the world because there's there's a lot of different events that are occurring. But it's, it's great to figure out what's happening. But they have JavaScript exceptions for Chrome, for Edge, and for V3 of, of JavaScript. And then they have the JavaScript runtime exceptions. So you can disable all of those if you want. But with What's really nice is you can enable them all so you have to cl click them all and so now when you run your application switch to the application here if you go into say the admin so let's go ahead and log into the dashboard you'll notice that it will stop on an exception here and what you can do is you, you can see the call stack here so here's the exception that comes up so they're they're throwing a generic exception here. What's nice is that you can see every different event through the debugger or what's happening. And then you can go ahead and just continue on if you want. So you hit continue, go ahead and log in. We get another exception, continue, get another exception. So this can be really tiresome. So what you, what you can do is if you go into your exception settings here, disable all your JavaScript exceptions go back to your application. As you can see here, we're paused in Visual Studio. So there's a nice interface, Chrome debug tools. So if we go in here and go more tools and open up Dev Chrome tools, you can see that we can actually see the line in conjunction with the line that's in Visual Studio. So these actually match up, so they work together. And here it gives you a list of what occurs in the exception. So this is very valuable information for debugging. So the, one of the things we wanna do is now we'll say continue, and we'll go into our blog, and then into the blog post. So there's an exception that come up here. Here, we're at a stopping point here. So we head back and we can go ahead and continue. And so if they click on the image, go ahead and delete the image. So now we can go ahead and go back and let's go ahead and enable all the, make sure those are all enabled. And now if we head back and let's go ahead and click on the plus sign, then you'll notice here that we're getting exceptions. So this kind of can show you, gives you a, a picture of what's happening in the code. So. You can see that they're in the admin.js code. So now if you explore, we notice that there's a orchardcore.media. So if we click on that, and there's a media.js file. So let's take a look at that in more detail, because that seems like something that we may want to explore. But if we scroll down here, we notice that there's functions for create, folder delete, folder add, before folder add, media list moved, and you'll notice here that there's a load folder. This looks very promising. So I notice that here, during the folder selected, they're not loading the folder, but when they add a folder, they are. So that's probably key to the solution. I bet if we take the self.load folder and place it inside the folder selected, that would have a solution. So if we clicked on the folder, say the media library, then it would load all of the files and we can see them. 
So let's explore this a little bit more. So this is a JavaScript, but it needs to communicate with the Orchard Core C Sharp application and how they communicate is through a REST API. So what we need to do is to search for that REST API. So if we do a search on load folder here, and then here it is, this is where, this is where we call the API. We're doing a, a method get. So now I know that get media items is the API call. So what we can do now is switch over to Visual Studio. And this is a really valuable tool. If we go edit, find and replace, and then search find in files, and we'll search for get media items. And then we'll say find all. And it'll go through the whole solution and we'll find anything with get media items here. And there we go. Here's the API call. And you notice if you scroll down, it's actually the get items URL. So that's what we've seen in the JavaScript file. And here's basically get media items the API. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here. So we know that the JavaScript will call this function. So we'll go ahead and set a breakpoint. Let's head back to the application and let's go ahead and, and click here and we're getting exception. So let's go back to Visual Studio, our exception settings, and let's go ahead and unselect all of the JavaScript settings again and head back. And of course we can, we're pausing the debugger. We can just either continue here or we could continue here, here, either way. So we can just go ahead and continue and then continue and see how it's nicely integrated into Chrome DevTools and into Chrome. So now if we click on the media file, you notice that the API is not being called. Or even if we say cancel, go out of here, go back into the blog post, the API is never called. So now let's try this. So let's go in here, select our file, hit delete, add another picture. API is not being called. We know the workaround is if we go ahead and click here, add a folder, click OK. Bam, it hit our breakpoint. See that? So now we know that in order to fix this bug, we need to have the API call to get media items. Otherwise, our list will never get populated since we have a clean browser. So now are we able to fix the bug? Well, yes, but we need to do more investigation into the code. I suspect for performance reasons, there is more to it. I assume they are storing the media metadata in local storage. Also, we really need requirements. Without requirements, we can't create a test case. Without passing a test, how do we know we've actually solved the issue? To recap, with the powerful tools integrated, we were able to debug through the Orchard Core application using Visual Studio, integrated with the Chrome DevTools. We were able to see why the images were not being loaded since there was no call to the REST API endpoint, get media items. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.